Jose 13 and your eyes are glued to Access Unlimited. I'm Dwayne D. Hill. I'm here with Access Unlimited. I'm here with uh, Wednesday 13. I'm going to be performing here tonight at the Black Sheep. And uh, so, how are you doing, Wednesday? I am. I'm perfect. I'm glad to be at the Black Sheep. I thought it was the Chris Farley movie, but it's not. Damn. Um, <laughs> I'm just messing around. He's dead. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Um, anyway. So, uh, traveling all over the U.S., how, how would you describe the rock scene from uh, the way the fans are responding to your style of music throughout, like from the eastern seaboard all the way to the western seaboard, and uh, and how the fans are reacting to the style of music? You know, it's a, it's a different thing. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's trends every three or four years that people get into, and now it seems to be this, uh, this emo, screamo type, sort of deal, which I'm not even quite sure what, what that is exactly. Um, but, you know, that's basically what's what's popular right now, and what we're doing is totally the ass-in opposite of it. Um, you know, the reaction's great. I mean, there's kids that come out to our shows, and uh, they get to, you know, since we have such a image, you know, the, the fans dress up, and you look out and see these kids with bullet holes in their heads and zombie clothes, and, you know, it's like Halloween every day we, we, we play. So uh, so it's pretty cool. We, we provide an outlet for these kids to come out, and they can escape from their boring lives. And same thing for us. We're, we get to get out of the boring van and, and play, you know, for an hour and just act like complete idiots. So it's, the reaction's been really good. So every time we, I've been really been touring a whole lot in the U.S. So uh, you know that's been a, a really cool thing for you know just seeing it grow every time we play because I started really touring the U.S. like two years ago and it was you know two people now there's four in the audience which is great. <laughs> I understand you used to play guitar and uh, then you switched to just singing. Could you tell us about that? Yes, it was a decision that I didn't really have a choice of doing because I was in a car accident and I broke my collarbone on my left shoulder which is where my guitar usually was hanging from and uh, so I decided you know I could either keep it a you know a four piece and with one guitar but I always liked it better with two guitars so I write a lot of the music where it has two guitar parts and uh, so just added another guy and you know at first I didn't think I would like it but uh, it's actually gave me a lot more freedom, and I've really kind of explored more of the stage show and add more visual stuff, and I can do more stuff and play with more toys and uh, less responsibility for me. I don't have to think as much. I don't have to tune guitars. I just kind of make sure I know the words and sing on key. So that's good for me. So who would you say your your biggest influence is to get you into this uh, genre of music that you guys play and also the show that you do? You know, I mean, it's some night when I was a kid, you know, I basically went straight from G.I. Joe's straight into, you know, Kiss and Alice Cooper and uh, Motley Crue and Twisted Sister. Those were kind of the, the bands that, that got me to do what I wanted to do music-wise, uh, image-wise, show-wise. I mean, it all kind of comes from that. I just kind of take what I got out of that and put my own little stamp on it and, and go out. So it's to me, it's just, you know, it's exactly that. And uh, there's not a lot of new music I really listen to, um, you know, so I'm really just kind of the guy that listens to a lot of older stuff. And, and you know, I don't really, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on today and, and the new scene and music and changes and stuff, but it never really uh, affects me where I'm going, well, i got to go for more of that direction to fit in and, and stuff. I just, I just do what I do, and I've been doing that for a really long time now. I mean, my... You know this kind of music. I've been doing it since I was 19 years old. You know, which you know, and now I'm uh, I'm 21. That's cool. Um, and uh, when you guys are traveling, do you have a, a big road crew, or do you guys are pretty much run on a real small uh, crew of people? Enormous road crew. We have two people, and uh, they're huge guys. Long arms. We figure we get guys with longer arms. They can do more, and they can do what maybe ten people would do. So, we have two guys with extremely long long arms, and they're just yeah, they make it big. So, 
you know, and we decided not to tour in a tour bus. We wanted to be in a van. We wanted to sleep on top of each other and smell each other's dirty clothes, and uh, that was just a choice that we made along the way. We like it stinky, and we like less people helping us out. We like to pack our own stuff up in the cold, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's exercise for us, lifting amps. People, people lift weights. We lift Marshall cabinets and microphones, microphone weights. So how was the road trip coming all the way from uh, Boise into Colorado and the current weather situation? You guys hit anything bad? The only thing we hit was a couple deers, um, but everything else was fine. A lot of snow, a lot of mountains, a lot of winding roads, a couple dead deers. Um, and, uh, but it was other than that, it was, it was pretty simple. Now, did you guys originally base out of uh, North Carolina, or because I noticed that's where you did your last recording was in a studio over there, or or you guys uh, mostly based out of uh, Europe? No, um, I mean I'm the only guy that lives in North Carolina, but I record all the records there, and you know the the guys in the band are from all over the U.S. and they come in when we rehearse, and we usually before a tour. You know, we'll have three or four days to rehearse. I send them the music, they learn it, they come in, we rehearse three or four days, and then we go on tour. So it isn't like, hey guys, we're having band practice, let's meet at the garage at 6 on Thursday. It's not really like that. It's like, hey, we're on tour on the 30th, be here the 26th, and we got to rehearse. So it's, yeah. And then we kind of learn on the road what works and what doesn't work, and we get better. So usually at the end of the tour, we sound amazing. First couple shows, not so good. You have a DVD that you put out uh, called Weirdo a Go Go. Is that correct? Yes. You tell us about it. Yes, it's uh, you know it's nothing music related. It was something that I created in one drunken stupor one night. Uh, you know, basically I had the idea of doing these old um, hosting like old monster movie clips like Elvira and uh, Vampira and, and uh, you know things like that, and then it turned into me hosting these clips and then we brought in puppets and then all of a sudden it was like some kind of psychotic sesame street with horror movie clips into it and it really makes no sense whatsoever it has nothing to do with with my music or anything that i've done it's just and it's like and it's comedy you know i guess if you get that style and uh, it's just me interacting with puppets and there's like a storyline with it as well about a murdered seahorse yeah so uh you know if anyone says that this has destroyed my career then i just i blame that on alcohol a lot of people just all they have this predetermined idea of what it's about they see the image of the band they go well, these guys are serious they're just dark scary and they're trying to be monsters and uh, no it's i mean the the image definitely you know it has this one side of it but it, it's it's theater it's comedy it's fun and a lot of my stuff that i that, uh, that i write definitely stems from humor and comedy so you, you can't have the tragedy without the comedy in there, as far as I'm concerned. So this is the co comedic side of, of what I do, and I think people that really have been a fan for years knows that I have that, that side to me. So this just kind of really just opens the door wide open on it. It's just a fun project now. Yeah. And uh, I understand you have a new album that will be coming out here soon. Um, you want to tell us about that? new album is called Skeletons, and uh, it comes out April 29th, as last I heard. And uh, I recorded it last August, and uh, you know I started working on it uh, last year, earlier last year, and recorded it, and uh, just had a, this. It's a really personal record for me because I, you know, over the years I've really, you know, I was just saying earlier that I write a lot of stuff from comedy and fun, and a lot of my stuff's just sort of fantasy and just made up kind of stuff. I never really kind of wrote from a personal point of view. This album really touches on a lot of personal things and things I've been going through um, you know so it definitely has this more kind of darker real side there's still the fun elements that, that I have but there's definitely some dark corners in, on this record and uh, you know um, also with with the record you know the day I finished recording and I also crashed my car and I almost died <laughs> uh, which was you know which was not very fun and uh, so yeah this this record really just kind of it's a really bizarre record how it how it came like a lot of the songs that you know it's just one of those things you got to listen to and, and see. It's kind of wrote itself. It's not a concept record, but it's uh, it's definitely got a story tagged along with it, and it's not a very pretty picture, but uh, but it's it's real. So it's probably the most real and honest I think I've ever been on on an album, and it's probably the, my favorite record I've ever done.